Hey folks. Hi Valerie. I'm pretty good, but your your audio is is terrible. Terrible. Oh. Yes, it, it, it's like very very um rough, quote unquote rough. Yeah, I, you may want to check your microphone. Okay, I'll try to change uh, headset. In just a yeah, moment. Try that. It's it's kind of distorted. It got a little better now, but it was really distorted. Okay. Wait a moment. <laughs> All right, we're uh, we're still a few minutes away. This is Hannes. Hi, Hannes. Good to hear you. So, so far, I can see we're it's like mostly presenters in the group. So, it, it, it's going to be like us talking to each other if somebody, if nobody else turns up. I sure hope somebody else turns up. Uh, well, there's still a little bit of time, and it's a uh, fairly late in the day. I know. <laughs> so, yeah. I have already now before it even has started. Yeah. 
How's everybody doing? Very busy. How about you? Yeah. Good. So far. Yeah. Well, you have, uh, I think, fairly relaxed rules in your country here. Yeah? yeah, but, you know, people behave the same way more or less anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> No, in in Austria, in, like the part of Austria, um, where I live, uh, we had for some period of time we had very strict rules. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying this is cultural, right? So, like the 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 way you express how to behave varies, but um, like with some exceptions, so, well, I think it it evens itself out, or at least in people in places where. They're not behaving like complete idiots, but. Hello, and uh, please don't forget to sign a little blue sheet. Right. It's on the, as a part, as a part. It, 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 it was, it's about the same amount of distortions, actually. Um, oh. But uh, I cannot change it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is what it is. <clears throat> we'll leave it. Okay. I mean, I, okay. You might just want to move the microphone a little bit away from your mouth. It might help. Okay. Okay. Is it better now? <clears throat> yeah. Actually, a little bit. Okay. So Alexei, Alexei, we now have two blue sheets on the Etherpad. It's 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 not a good idea. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, if you, Alexei, if you use the part of the blue sheet where it actually says blue sheet. Anyway. <clears throat> Sorry, where I was typing there. We're getting um, a smattering of attendees. Um, for those of you who are just about just joining, we are about to start. Uh, it's a good idea to take the uh, time when we're playing around with audio to go ahead and sign the uh, virtual blue sheet at the end of the bottom of the etherpad. If you are curious about where the Etherpad is, it's actually in the um, meeting announcement and also on the Jabber channel, um, which is uta at jabber.itf.org. We'll be starting in a minute or two. Uh, I'm Valeri and I will act as a uh, World Turkey manager. Uh, so, if you want to uh, speak, please uh, uh, type plus Q in Webex, and uh, then I will uh, let you to speak. And uh, um, I think we need uh, a note taker and the JavaScript. Any volunteers? Right. So volunteers or we'll we'll start dragooning people into service in OWASP, i tech actually uh help to take 15 minutes oh excellent a volunteer no i meant uh what about you guys you know <laughs> yeah it actually helps if you even if there are two of us it actually helps if we have somebody to um do some uh, minute taking and uh, um, help us keep watch on on the other on other on other meetings that I've been to in this virtualized ITF meeting. Uh, I've seen that there are situations where people need to be channeled to um, to WebEx mic, even though um, 
you know, we, we were supposed to we have a sort of working queue management, but some people have audio issues. Um, and in that case, just sort of um, speak up on Jabber and we'll figure it out. Um, two minutes past the hour. And uh, if we can get somebody to volunteer to take notes, that would help. Um, anyone? Uh, I will, but I'll do it in five minutes. That's excellent. That's, that's Alexei, right? Was that Alexei or was it somebody else? Yes, yes, that was me, yes. All right, excellent, thank you. All right, well. <clears throat> As usual, Alexei, it's just sort of discussion notes and decisions that's important. It's sort of we're not, um, we don't have to um, record the, um, the presentation. So, um... uh, sorry, Leif, uh, uh, when you want to go to the next slide, and uh, please uh, tell me, I will. Uh... I was just about to actually. Okay. Yes. Um, so welcome to the uh, virtual interim of the UTA working group. Um, and we're still gathering people. People are still entering the room. So I will speak very slowly for a little bit before we get into our presentations. Um, your chairs today, me, Leif Johansson and Valerie Smyslov. Um, and um, our AD switched over from Alexei to Barry. Um, who I ha, who's sort of been um, at least my AD for for other working groups. So uh, glad to have you back. Uh, uh, now I, I assume since you're all here that you actually found the WebEx um, link and um, meeting slides. But I will repeat here that um, if you're here and intend to be here, please add your name to the um, virtual blue sheet at the end of the ether pad. Um, and do consider joining the um, uh, the Jabber session. So um, let's avoid using video. Let's mute when we're not speaking and use the um, by now standard ITF mechanism for queue management, plus Q and minus Q if you want to get removed. Um, Valerie will keep track of people in and out of the queue. Can we just switch back to the note well for one second? Um, just, uh, if this is your first ITF, virtual or otherwise, note the requirements of the note well, especially when it comes to um, with respect to IPR. Um, it, it, it does happen uh, that we get ITR, uh, IPR issues in the ITF. And, um, it is really important that we um, keep on top of this. So that next slide and i haven't heard a uh, uh a beep in a while so i'm sort of hoping that it's safe to keep kick this all into play now so um we have uh, a couple of presentations today uh we have um like 15 minutes each on three presentations uh and the first is Draft Treffer UTA BCP 195 BIS. So uh, somebody's taking them, taking it upon themselves to go and do a BIS revision of, of our uh, one of our core specifications, which is um, very, very good uh, work. And uh, um, I'm assuming uh, Yaron and I think, it, is, is it Peter or Yaron is going to present this? Um, Peter. All right. So um, I'm assuming you're presenting this here with the 
um, with the hope of getting it adopted as a working group document. But let's get to that after your presentation. So I think, Valerie, with that, if Peter is um, ready to rock and roll, um, and Valerie, uh, if you can switch over to his slides. If, uh, will you uh, quickly uh, uh, go through the document status before we start presentations, or we will skip it? Did the question get through to the chairs about going through the document status? This is me not being um, uh, attending to my mute setting. All right, so yes, uh, we did actually have a um, an RFC published uh, since um, in our last physical meeting. Uh, so the required two last is now uh, RFC 8689. That right. Um, so the TLS for email uh, is in the ISD queue. Um, and I remind me, Valerie, I think the misref um, is that. Can you remind it's, me how um, is that? How? It's a normative for a reference to old version deprecate from TLS working group that uh, that uh, yeah. isn't uh, ready yet. So we are waiting probably for a long time. To clear, yeah. Yes, but it's in RFC editor queue, so it's it's ready to publish. Just waiting for 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 another document for old version deprecate. And then um, we have a few um, proposed, um, two of them are being presented today. I don't think, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen any, uh, anything from uh, uh, the DTLS security module uh, in a while, but um, it, it, I, I guess it has been revised a few time, it, times. So um, re, um, review on the, uh, on the list is as always, um, appreciated, um, and I'll I won't speak to the other drafts because they're um, well being presented today. Um, and what's next after that? So, so we can go to we can, all right. Let's let's um, yeah let's switch over to Peter's presentation and um, hear about the status of one ninety five this. Okay, uh, so as you might recall, uh, Yaron, uh, Ralph, Holtz, and I worked on RC 7525 quite a while ago, five years ago, I guess it was. Um, and you can, uh, we're, we would like to have the working group consider whether we should do a BIS version of this. And we will, it's rather late for Yaron and Ralph, which is why I'm presenting, because uh, they might be half asleep. But here we are, and um, perhaps you could go to the next slide. Um, so I think it's in process. It's, it's not a plug. It's already switched. Just oh, wait okay. a moment. <laughs> Um, so this has, I can, I've got the slides on my computer here, so I can start talking and then we'll keep making progress. Uh, so we, it's, this document is, like I say, five years old. Um, we have, uh, this was before TLS 1.3, obviously. So at the time we were actively working to, uh, get folks moving to 1.2. 
and talking about what some of the issues are that folks need to be aware of um, with regard to 1.2. We had a companion RFC 7457, which you might recall, which talked about the TLS attacks uh, at that time. And obviously a lot has changed in the last five years. Um, TLS 1.3 is out. Uh, we have quite a bit of adoption of um, the TLS 1.2, TLS 1.3 even has a pretty good adoption and those numbers continue to improve. The, this RFC or BCP has also been highly cited both inside and outside the ITF. And so I think it's been, it's helped to move the needle on people's understanding, especially because uh, Yaron and Ralph and I tried to focus it on folks who are actually using TLS and not for uh, TLS experts. So we're trying to provide guidance that, and I think it has proved useful to people. Uh, let's see, next slide, please. Uh, so the, our thought is um, we would keep it targeted at that same audience. Um, obviously TLS 1.3 was, uh, came out in 2018, three years after this RFC. So we definitely want to mention TLS. Um, I don't really want to get into too much, you know, we don't really want to present details about all these topics because uh, we'd uh, rat hole on the first one and never get through the, the planning idea. But we just wanted to lay out what the thoughts are and then take some questions. Uh, so definitely have to mention TLS 1.3, whether as a should or a must. Um, there's active work among lots of folks who try to deprecate the older versions. And there's the uh, old versions deprecate document in the TLS working group that we would like to reference. And I know I, I pinged um, Benjamin the other day and he said it's just waiting on his action on, on the AD side. Uh, so we should be able to reference that. There was the um, SCSV stuff in RFC 7507, which came out right about the same time as this. So we might want to update the, how we describe the fallback um, processes. There are, of course, TLS 1.3 cleaned up a lot and removed some of the complexity and options that were there. But since not everyone's going to be on TLS 1.3 anytime soon, uh, we should update some of the guidance uh, with regard to TLS 1.2. Um, just as a side note, I think when um, Yaron and Ralph and I worked on this and the working group uh, discussed this, we kind of thought we would update this every number of years. And I think that's where we are. Uh, eventually, we'll probably have a, a tur doc that uh, will say don't use TLS 1.2 anymore, but that's going to be some years down the line. Um, so the, there's some TLS 1.3 challenges that people have in the field, uh, certainly with regard to the zero round trip stuff. And we might want to say some things about that. And there's work going on, uh, obviously the certificate transparency work has, um, proceeded quite well. There's also the encrypted SNI, which is not, uh, you know, it's still winding its way through the TLS working group. Should we say something about that? Should we wait until uh, you know a future version? Um, those are some of the open issues we might want to discuss. And let's talk, go into the next slide so we can just finish walking through the um, our planning for the document. These are the discussions that we've just had amongst the co-authors. And obviously, if we adopt this in the working group, there would be lots of discussion. Um, another thing we might want to do is for greenfield protocols, say that you should only use 1.3 because why would you still use 1.2? Um, there's some guidance that is in RFC 8740 on multiplex protocols, probably should reference that. There is some work on, I mean, I, th I think the one of the things that we have seen is that we're trying to move the world to forward secrecy. And TLS 1.3 obviously puts us in square in that. Um, there are some things that you can do or not do in TLS 1.2 in order to 
make sure that you do have forward secrecy. And so providing some guidance around that specifically renegotiation and what you do with tickets and pre-shared keys and things like that um, would probably be valuable to provide here for folks so that they, even if there's using TLS one to two, they're kind of in the spirit of where things are moving. Uh, DTLS obviously was part of the our recommendations as well in 7525, and the I know that the DTLS 1.3 document is pretty close in the TLS working group, so we might want to reference that. Exactly when that's going to be approved, I don't know or, or progress, uh, but we'll need to have some text around DTLS versions as well as TLS versions. There are some things these days that are kind of mostly fixed with regard to compression and so on. So we might want to move some things to an appendix so that people are aware of those, or perhaps we just reference 7525 on some things and remove some things. Um, there's a lot of background information in there that we would probably move around or put in an appendix as well. Uh, we were not planning to make changes to or update or replace 7457, which was the TLS attacks document. However, uh, you know, we would continue to reference that. So that's kind of the, the broad thinking that the co-authors have had. And we've been talking, uh, Yaron submitted an initial version, which has none of these changes. All it does is copies over 7525. Um, so we haven't touched the document yet. We've just had some discussions among the co-authors and ideally we feel it would be great for the working group if it's going to be around long enough um, to take this on so that we can have some open discussion and come to consensus about what we should do with regard to our TLS recommendations as we update them from 7525. And that's the thinking that we have had so far, uh, maybe the next slide that we talk about, uh, you know, what, what what would come next in terms of our action items, and I, we would welcome discussion about how to proceed. All right. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to queue management now. Wes and Valerie, uh, do we have anybody on the queue wanting to speak? There's nobody asking for any uh, questions. All right. Well, um, I, I think I, as with my chair hat on, I think it's I, I think it's safe to say that I, I don't think we would have any problems from our ads if we wanted to adopt this. Uh, we 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 sort of. Uh, I I don't necessarily think the ads want us to turn into one of those eternal working groups that just keep never wants to die but this clearly is in scope um, for the charter of, of the UCA working group um, so I think if the working group wants to have this um, adopted I don't think it's going to be a problem for us um, I agree I agree and who's typing into the chat in WebEx like the WebEx is only for so if you do actually want to discuss something, uh, instead of just sort of announcing your intention to go to the mic, uh, just go and um, talk, type into into Jab, and I think I think I saw John adding yeah. himself to the queue. Yeah. So John, John, please speak. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah, I just look through the document. I think uh, some of the key lanes could could be a bit stricter. Um, curves smaller than 192 bits should not be used. It's a bit is very close. Should be tightened to 224. Shall not be used or something. I don't didn't see that on the list. This is this is Peter uh, John. That's a good point. Uh, we didn't have that on our list of proposed changes, and I think it should be there. Things have changed in the last five years for sure. That would be a good thing for us to discuss if we adopt the document. All right. 
anyone else? So I'll, sort of speaking as an individual, I'll say that um, we've, I believe we've had a few proposed, proposed errata um, over the years. Um, it might probably is a good idea to look those over. Noted. And see if, right. Um, now, I don't know um, how, how successful HUMs have been. Um, and we certainly have to sort of confirm any decision on the um, on the uh, on the mailing list. But uh, if I could ask for a virtual hum on on Jabber, uh, or um, maybe combine Jabber and uh, and um, and here people can say plus one or minus one to the following question: Should the working group uh, um, seek to adopt? With the permission of the AD, of course, seek to adopt uh, draft draft for UTA BCP 195 BIS as a UTA working group document. Seeing a couple of um, people support um, adoption on, um, <coughs> on Jabber. This. Several several people indicated in the job that it is a support adoption. About uh, five uh, or six. Um, so I think um, what we'll do we'll drop an email, um, a confirmation email um, to the uh, to the list. Um, and but I think you should the author should expect to. Uh, to resubmit either this version or the next one um, as um, draft, U draft uh, ITS UTA BCP1 on I design this. All right. Um, I think with that, um, we seem to be on track for time. Um, I want to turn it over to Hannes talking about um, TS, TTLS profile for the IoT space. I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, I think um, uh, so. This this document has been around for a little while. Next slide. Um, as the title says, it specifically uh, focuses on one or three. So we also had, um, similar to what Peter uh, mentioned, uh, there was this uh, prior development in this working group, which led to RFC 7925, the IoT, uh, TLS and DTLS profiles. And at that time, when we started uh, this work, obviously IoT was still at an early stage and there was either little uh, or custom uh, communication security in place. And uh, luckily, I think it's fair to say that all the major IoT platform um, vendors uh, slash uh, operators use TLS and DTLS to protect their communication. And as we uh, found out that many uh, like Co-op and MQTT for that purpose. Uh, so um, those are the application protocols secured using using TLS and DTLS. And, and also, um, uh, at the same time, like these protocols are then used for um, IoT device management. And we have uh, a sort of I co-chairing uh, a group in, in the Open Mobile Alliance where the work on lightweight M2M -M has been done. We've had more than, or many test fests with more than 40 independent implementations uh, that all used um, at least uh, DTLS and later we uh, provided co-op over uh, TCP and so there are also now um, TLS implementations for for IoT that are used in those devices. So uh, that's I would say that's pretty good. Um, and in general, uh, if you look around and and we've uh, done sort of investigations on what the different stacks uh, provide, there are lots of high quality embedded implementations 
of uh, DLS and DTLS 1.2 on the market. So that's all great. Um, however, uh, at that time when we worked on, on 79.25, um, it was only focused on version 1.2 and, and there is obviously nothing in there for 1.3. Next slide. So this is what uh, this document is about, the TLS 1.3 profile uh, document. And there are um, a few things that it does. It, it's much, much shorter than um, the previously mentioned RFC because TLS uh, 1.3 and DTLS 1.3 fixed many problems and cleaned up lots of uh, issues. Uh, so, which is a good thing. Um, so, a short document, but there's still a few things uh, left that need to be done. Um, the first point is that uh, TLS 1.3 makes algorithm recommendations uh, very much like what version 1.2 did. Uh, and those recommendations have been sort of tailored for the generic uh, web usage in terms of algorithms, and, and that really worked well. Uh, but it turns out that um, IoT communities and, and vendors uh, use different algorithms. So um, and of course, uh, the TLS 1.3 specification, like it, uh, like its earlier version, have foreseen that there are other deployment environments that may have different recommendations, and um, so that that needs to be done. Um, the uh, the next thing I'm thinking that's a little bit bigger uh, is that 1.3 added a zero round trip um, functionality functionality. And it, it says application protocol must not use um, that mode without the profile defines its use. And of course, for HTTP, that this has been done. Uh, there's a separate RFC on that 8470. Um, but since we um, use, as, as mentioned on a previous slide, use um, other protocols, uh, mostly in the IoT space that are more um, optimized, if you will, uh, for, for that use case, uh, we added something on on co-op um, very much. Can I can I just, can I just in, in, interrupt you? Although Stephen said at the end, some you introduced the term, and Stephen, you can't come to the mic. I uh, asked you to to define what CTLS is. Uh, you uh, you asked me what DTLS is. CTLS. Oh, CTLS, uh, uh, compact TLS, but that's on the next slide. Uh, oh, sorry. No problem. Uh, um, yeah, so um, to finish this one off, uh, so we, we added this um, this profile for the zero round trip in line with what the RFC 8470 did, uh, but just for co-op. Co-op is uh, conceptually very similar to HTTP in terms of its RESTful design, so that feel, uh, felt applicable. Um, for MQTT, um, we still have to, to do more work. Um, we're trying to catch up on like what the deployment uh, situation is. There are different uh, versions that are, are not backwards compatible, and so uh, that's a slightly different story. Um, next slide. Um, there are also some newer IoT developments, um, and which I think uh, should be covered there as well as a kind of an update uh, to the old RFC. Um, one is the further developments around bandwidth re reduction techniques, and uh, there was a discussion on the list about the CWO compressed certificates. Uh, John, who's a all also on the call, uh, triggered that debate and uh, made a contribution um, in form of an ITF draft. And uh, there's also the whole work on certificate compression uh, that's newer. Um, and then on top of that, there are even alternative uh, certificate formats like uh, um, the use of CWT, which is um, yet another uh, area. So there's, uh, there's more work um, to or more extensions to make uh, DLS um, sort of consume fewer bits on the wire. And then, uh, as many of you know, there's also the compact DLS, um, a sort of a compressed version of DLS uh, that may be useful to consider here as well. Uh, 
Um, also important um, and specifically designed for IoT deployments was the connection ID, and that's something that is being um, finalized in the DLS working group uh, right now, or for a little while now. Uh, um, one part is in a separate extension to 1.2, and the other one is, is indeed a sort of built in with uh, more privacy um, mechanisms in 1.3 itself, DTLS 1.3. It's a DTLS feature. Um, and then there have been also updates uh, on the maximum fragment lens extension, um, which became the record size limit extension, uh, which is a mechanism to reduce the or indicate on how much RAM uh, a beer has, uh, which is um, of course also limiting resource on an IoT device. It doesn't have uh, a huge amount of RAM. And so, so that's good to know for the other side. And so there was uh, a new RFC published by the TLS working group there, uh, which I think we should uh, uh, sort of cast there because the previous recommendation um, uh, sort of for the pre previous RFC recommended the use of the, MF, uh, the maximum fragment lens extension uh, for exactly that reason. Um, and then there's this topic which uh, interest or it's a coincidence, I would say, has been discussed uh, extensively on the DLS mailing list um, the last couple of days and weeks is this um, the optimized retransmissions during the handshake, uh, which are um, sort of just DL DTLS uh, one or three makes a different approach to retransmission specifically based on learnings that uh, we made in mesh networks and some of the low power area networks uh, where you have a lot of packet loss. Uh, yeah, uh, next slide. So, um, and and as, as you can imagine, the reason why I'm I'm here in this group is uh, because the previous work was done here, so it felt like kind of natural place to to go to. Um, it worked out pretty well last time, so we thought, uh, yeah, why not? Why not this time as well? Um, it's a it's a smaller it's a smaller extension, as I said. Just because of the way uh, how DLS or how the DLS 1.3 work was done, um, what I think we also have to do is, um, and and uh, Thomas, um, my co-author, and, and I have um, started doing that already, like looking at different uh, embedded DLS stack and, and stacks and see how uh, they are doing with regards to the compliance of um, of the uh, previously published RFC, whether there's some fine tuning needed or some additional wordings and um, also um, I've been reaching out to companies to see specifically those the cloud providers who use uh, DLS um, to see whether they have any and run into any issues that are worthwhile to mention on top of what we uh, what we have already uh, documented and of course ideally uh, something related to DLS 1.3 but uh, who knows what they come up there are a few things that um, that were mentioned to me already. Um, um, for example, specifically on the use of uh, um, it's sort of the certificates, uh, certificates that are put into the devices uh, during manufacturing, and then unfortunately uh, um, with a lifetime that is too short. And so when they leave the uh, the department store, they actually already the, you suddenly turn on the, the device and it has expired certificates. Uh, so that's an issue. Um, some uh, problems with F SNI implementations uh, embedded in embedded stacks, and uh, uh, some of it is related to the use of um, DLS on some of the non-IP-based uh, transports. So I will have to see whether that uh, fits nicely in there. Uh, but we want to know more from from other companies, and if uh, someone of you has some insights there. Uh, we would be really interested to uh, to learn more about that. So I can see Alexi is a uh, water queue. So Alexi, um, yeah, I'm, I'm supportive adopting this in UTA. Um, I think it would be important just to send it to check that this document is aligned with previously presented document. I don't know how much alignment there is, but 
Mm -hmm. um, and the other uh, is a question. Uh, if you want to include CTLS uh, recommendations, I assume this will delay the document quite a bit, right? Um, yeah, it's a good, um, it's, uh, it's a good point on like how long we want to run this, um, whether this is supposed to be a shorter process or whether there's uh, um, a longer effort. But I agree if you, um, it depends what we want to say. If we just want to say, oh, there's something there as well, uh, it's working progress, uh, that may be fine if it's more documenting um, sort of like best current practices in, in CTLS, then uh, I, I agree with you. I think it's more in the line of, well, I was thinking more in the line of the former uh, for that purpose. And the same, I think also what um, the work that John has been doing, and also I think also the certificate compression, that's a newer, that's newer stuff. Uh, so this would be more like, uh, um, if you have that problem, then uh, here's something to, to consider type of, uh, um, indication rather than everyone in the industry is doing it uh you should do it you should do it too yeah i'm tempted to suggest that you do a quick revision for tls 1.3 recommendation and dtls mm -hmm. and then you do another revision for ctls later on if you want to okay fair enough all right any other question for Hannes? Um, all right. Um, I, I actually agree with um, Alex, what Alexa said. I think if we are publishing recommendations and profiles, they should be based on a, at least some body of experience. And if you're sort of can't do that and also live on the bleeding edge of what what the next thing is um but um other than that um, I, I think having multiple revisions is probably a better idea for other reasons as well okay um so, but again this is all sort of part of the working group's discussion on the on the list eventually right so um uh, i think uh, if um we can do we can do the same um, kind of virtual hum uh, plus plus one for adopting this. Um, in that case, I think it would be a draft IDF uh, seventy nine twenty five bis um, yeah. um, as sort of in the analogy with what we um, um, talked about uh, for. Um, yeah, unfortunately, not on chapters. <laughs> uh, if you Somebody say in WebEx, I can count you. Say say that again. Say your opinion in WebEx or WebEx chat. I'll I'll count you. I'll... Okay. WebEx or Jabber or WebEx chat. Yes. Say what you believe. Say, uh, support uh, or disagree with adoption. And, um, it's under name or web off uh, group. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Uh, that's uh, so yeah, every time I log in, I, I show up as uh, OWASP. It's kind of an identity problem. Yes. Yeah, we know it well. And I, I want to add uh, a small note that I agree with Alexei that CTLS, uh, CTLS is better to be handled separately because from my understanding of the uh, perspectives of CTLS, it, it will be a long story. And uh, uh, it will definitely delay the publication of the recommendation for TLS and DTLS uh, 1.3. Okay. Tim, Tim Costello remarked on, on uh, um, I, I'm not sure if you wanted that um, 
the mic, Tim, but um, that uh, you, you would also be curious to see the experience and issues encountered by, that, by IT company. All right. Um, I haven't seen any um, anyone disagree. Um, we'll send out the usual confirmation email to the list, but it does sound like you should be prepared to uh, resubmit as a working group document, Hannes. Um, just change it a little bit. And with that, uh, we are switching over to Seabor compression of RFC 2925 profile X509 certificates. That's a mouthful. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, this is uh, mainly about Draft Matson TLS Seabor cert compress, um, which uses Draft RASA COSI Seabor. And there's also a COSI draft. The current uh, plan is to merge all of these and resubmit to COSI. But uh, more of that later. So, next slide. And this is uh, quite related then to the last presentation, the TLS profile, because this SIBO compression is aiming for the TLS 1.2. TLS compression. So, as stated in the TLS compression draft, not my draft, the working group adopted uh, X509 certificates take up a huge part of the total number of bytes. And this is especially true for CTLS when you even compress and re encode the, uh, the handshake messages. Uh, and the <clears throat> what this draft does, there was a question from Sean Turner, how this is, um, what this does, and I saw now that uh, Hannah's draft is asking how this is negotiated. So what this draft does, it, uh, it registers a new compression algorithm for the TLS compression mechanism. Uh, so how this is, this is, from a TLS perspective, this is just a new compression algorithm, nothing more. And how you negotiate it is clear. This would then probably get number four or something, unless somebody else is registering a compression algorithm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this uses uh, draft RASA to compress from their encoding to Seabor. Uh, the aim is to support all RFC 7925 profile certificate. Uh, and the reason why a new compression algorithm is necessary is that general purpose compression algorithms does not compress these highly profiled certificates much at all, if anything. And since I submitted this draft, the COSI working group has decided to take on this work. They are currently rechartering, and this is uh, basically the, I think this is the only thing the working group will focus on, except standard registering new algorithms. So, next slide. Uh, here you can see example of, uh, so to the left you have a RFC 7925, Profile certificate taking 314 bytes. Said lib doesn't compress it well as much at all. Uh, in this example, 9%, and then that is actually one of the best results we had for said lib. By changing some of the bytes in the strings in the example, said we get said lib often increased the size instead. Uh, by re-encoding everything to a Seabor, uh, we can get over 50%, in this case, 57%. Uh, can take next slide. Uh, here's just an example of how it looked like. To the left, you have a OpenSSL formatting of the X509 certificate, and to the right is the Seabor sequence, including exactly the same information. Uh, so, you, 
there's a one-to-one -one mapping between these. Uh, next slide, which is the main discussion. So, uh, is so the main thought is to do this now in the COSI working group uh, and to register this compression algorithm for use in TLS from COSI. So, is this interesting for TLS 103 CTLS? I would say yes, and I so far seems to be interest. Is it okay to make such a TLS IANA registration from COSI? Formally, it's definitely okay, but of course, Utah or TLS should state that they want this. Uh, I don't think there is any meaning to have a separate draft in the TLS or Utah registering this in IANA, that's not very interesting. It's better to inform TLS Utah that this is happening and if they have any comments on the actual compression. Uh, next question I think is already done. The new version of draft shopping is uh, using RFC 7925 the same sort of profile. And the next things are things that we notice by trying to compress 7925. The uh, first point is that the ASN1 scheme, scheme would be extremely beneficial. I think not only for this compression, but also for other trying to implement the profile. I would and uh, I think it, right now we have that in draft draw, so it would be more sense to actually have it in the in an in draft chauffeuring updating uh, seven nine two five. Uh, other and then there's the rest is more minor things that the encoding text string seems unspecified. This path length constraint manager to support and it seems to be two different options to encode uh, false for the criticali criticality in extensions, which is of course following 5280. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Any questions, comments? Uh, hi, hi, John, uh, this is Hannes. Um, sounds cool. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see that uh, being used. Um, on one question, the, when you say ASM1 schema, what, what do you actually mean by that? Sort of more the, uh, the, the attributes you have in a certificate, uh, that is a schema or, or literally ASM1? Uh, I guess literally ASM1. Uh, Guess I need to think about that. What does that mean? Uh, similar to the, um, I guess it's, I'm not an expert on ASN1 by any means, but I guess it's ASN1, yeah. Like the appendix in draft Rasa right now. Um, I, I'll check it. All right, so um, this is it. So, uh, Jon, um, am I understanding you correctly that you are not proposing adoption of anything in UTA, but you are seeking, you, you, you want the UTA work, work in the UTA might overlap, might be effective with this work, is what you're saying essentially. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I think, I think several of these points have already been addressed in the updated draft chauffeuring. It is now updating um, updating 7925 and it's mentioning some of these things for discussion. Yeah, but, right. but, yeah. you know, given given what was just sort of, it was, I think, pointed out by several people that, you know, the working group is probably looking for a, a revision, a first revision, which um, doesn't include 
um, any references to the CTLS work. And only after that, you know, so, you know, how much of what you're talking about now is only in CTLS space and would that sort of, how would that affect your timeline? I think nothing what we are doing is for only CTLS. Um, but on the other hand, I think any recommendation in draft softening to, of using CBOR certificates might have to wait because this will not be done uh, shortly. Yeah. But I think having ASN1 and um, making the having a certificate profile in the draft and making that very strict and concise would be very good i think um, so this is more input to the draft softening and also information to the utah working group that this is happening likely to happen in the cozy working group keep an eye open on that all right it's good advice um, anyone else Uh, I can see a plus Q from Thomas and Bob in uh, a plus one science. So it's it's probably a bit late, but Thomas has something to say. And, um, I would like plus one to the previous thing, adoption. Okay. Uh, uh, are you going to uh, to uh, present this work in TLS working group or not? Uh, I have not asked for time for that. Um, Be because it, it, uh, formally it is some change to, uh, well, not change to TLS protocol, but you need some new code point from TLS space. And uh, probably it, it's it's interesting uh, for TLS working group, especially if it is coupled some somehow with CTLS uh, uh, work. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, I, I have informed the TLS working group uh, via mail. I, I might request some short time to present that. Uh, when COSI has uh, decided to do this, um, so the TLS, uh, all everybody in TLS working group is uh, and knows that this is happening. Um, otherwise, TLS working group does not really need to do anything. Um, the registration space in IANA is, I think, is uh, it can be done from cozy also but um and i don't think there's any meaning to have a uh, dragging that to tls also but unless the tls working group would like that but i i will i will check with the chairs if they want a short presentation of this at some later point okay thank you mm -hmm. Um, thank you, John. And that gets us to open mic time with four minutes to, to go in the uh, in our allotted time. So um, open mic. All right. I guess you can. Uh, everybody can get four minutes. Four minutes back, then um, the uh, your chairs will send various confirmation emails to the uh, uh, to the list. Uh, please review the the new draft as they appear, uh, and um, uh, let's uh, keep um, working. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.